Hi everyone, my name is Jose Soler and I work on the Design for Repair team at Microsoft. We're going to be disassembling the Surface Pro 9, which is one of our most repairable Surface devices. Detailed instructions are available in our service guides that are posted on the Microsoft support site. I'll be demonstrating the disassembly process on the Intel version of this device. The disassembly steps for the ARM version are very similar, however there are important differences which can be found in the service guide. Repair should be performed on an ESD work surface with grounding to protect the unit. Additionally, we recommend removing jewelry such as watches and rings. In addition, be sure to use the Windows system to shut down the computer completely before any repair. The tools needed for this assembly are a plastic spudger, battery protective cover, ESD safe tweezers, 3IP, 4IP, and 5IP Torx Plus screwdriver. Lastly, we'll use a display debonding tool, which is available to register pros on iFixit. To use the tool, we'll need a permanent marker, an opening pick, a metric ruler, 3mm Allen key, Phillips number 1, and two in-spring clamps to support the tool. Before starting, we'll remove the SSD, which triggers a battery shutdown to the device to make sure power is not flowing during the repair. The SSD removal also prepares the device for display replacement. We will press with our finger to pivot the SSD door open and remove it. The SSD is now exposed and we will use our 3IP driver to remove the screw. The SSD can now be disconnected and removed with the help of a plastic spudger. We will set the SSD aside on an ESD safe work surface. Next, we'll work on the display. On Pro 7 Plus, we re-engineered our bonding solution to enable fuel replacement of the display without heat and also allow for easy removal of the display adhesive. We've continued evolving this solution across Pro 8 and Pro 9 devices. We will start by repairing the display debonding tool. We suggest using this tool to reduce the risk of display damage and preserve the display for reuse while performing replacement of internal components. We'll use a ruler to mark a guitar pick at two positions, 3 mm and 8 mm. This will help us ensure we don't damage any cables during the display removal. Mount the debonding tool to the work surface so it is stable during the repair. We will first cut through the adhesive using the 3 mm setting and have one last pass at 8 mm along the top edge. To start the debonding process, we will hold the device with both hands and insert the opening pick into the right side speaker mesh. This will be our entry point into the device. We will then carefully push the device to the right direction to start cutting the display adhesive. When we get to the corners, we will turn the device accordingly. So after a full cycle, we'll remove the device and adjust the opening pick to 8 mm to cut to the top edge adhesive. We will only use this depth on the top edge of the display. We will then set the device flat and carefully lift the display away from the enclosure. If needed, you can use the opening pick to help separate the display. Flip the display 180 degrees so we can disconnect the display from the device. To disconnect the display, we will reveal the connection by removing a shield lid with plastic tweezers and using a plastic spudger to disconnect the cable from the display. The adhesive can easily be removed by manually peeling it away from the enclosure and the display. We'll place a battery cover while we work on internal components. We'll use a spudger to remove the shielding lid and conductive tape to remove the other end of the display cable.
Next, we will remove the surface connect cable. Using a spudger, disengage the latch to release the left end of the cable. At this point, the surface connect cable is only attached by screws and an adhesive strip. Remove the two screws on the right end of the cable using a 3IP driver. Note that there are magnets on this connector and the screws might become attached to them during removal. To remove the cable, hold the retention latch and pull up. Keep in mind that there is an adhesive holding the cable against the fan. Next, we'll remove the thermal module. Remove the conductive tape on both the top and left sides of the thermal module. Next, there's a total of 14 screws holding down the thermal module, which also includes the fan. We'll use a 3IP bit to remove them. Before removing the thermal module and the fan, use a spudger to lift the fan connector and disconnect the fan FPC. The thermal module and fan assembly can be removed by gently pulling up, keeping in mind that there is thermal interface material that could create a slight bund. The battery connector is now exposed and can be disconnected from the motherboard using a plastic spudger. Next, we will remove the battery. We will ensure that it has been disconnected from the motherboard. Then, remove 8 screws using a 4IP bit. Lastly, we'll remove one screw with a 3IP bit. Once the screws are removed, the battery can be removed from the device. Be careful to only handle the battery by the frame on the sides also, note to always protect the battery from accidental pokes, impact and bends during the repair, and account for all screws upon completion of the repair. Next, we'll remove the power and volume buttons. Remove the button board by removing two screws with a 3IP bit. After removing the screws, lift the button board and set it aside on an ESD safe surface. To remove the button clips, we'll use a plastic tweezers. Insert the tweezers in the enclosure opening and apply a light upward force. The clips are snapped into place. We can now remove the buttons from the device. Next, we'll remove the speakers. We'll start with the one on the left. Remove three screws with the 3IP driver. After removing the screws, lift the speaker away from the device. For the right speaker, remove two screws with the 3IP driver. Note that the missing screw has already been removed during the thermal module removal process, since it is shared with that component. After removing the screws, lift the speaker away from the device. We will then remove the Wi-Fi and sensor deck. Remove the shield lids from the motherboard to expose the sensor FPCs. We'll use a spudger for this. We'll disconnect the remaining seven cables from the motherboard. These correspond to the Wi-Fi antennas, cameras, and microphone. Remove a total of six screws. The first two in the center region will use a 3IP. The last four will use a 5IP. The two coaxial cables also need to be disengaged from their routing hooks. After the screws have been removed, the Wi-Fi and sensor deck can be removed from the device. Note the front facing camera and the rear facing camera will still be attached to the enclosure at this point. The front facing camera can be removed by using a flat plastic spudger. 
The rear camera can be removed by removing two screws with a 3 ip bit. We will remove the motherboard next. We'll start by removing the conductive tape on the bottom left region. Lastly, remove the six screws that mount the motherboard to the enclosure. We'll use a 3 ip bit. To remove the motherboard, we will lift up at a slight angle to make sure that the USB-C connectors can clear the enclosure. Lastly, we'll remove the kickstand. I'll note that this component can be removed without removing the display or any of the other components, but for purposes of the video, we've rearranged the order to showcase other repairs first since it helps to have the kickstand during the display removal. We'll first place the kickstand to a 90 degree angle. This will expose the screws. Use one finger to support the kickstand and remove the two screws with a 3IP driver. Next, firmly grip the hinge and the kickstand and adjust the angle to approximately 45 degrees. Gripping the kickstand with one hand and the top of the device with the other hand will slightly rotate the kickstand to release it from the screw bosses on the enclosure. Lastly, we'll firmly hold the device and pull the kickstand away from the enclosure. With this, we've completed the disassembly of the device. A few things to note, during reassembly, Make sure there aren't any screws or foreign objects inside the device, especially near the magnets or the battery region. After finishing, remember to attach the SSD and connect it to a power supply to get it to power on. I hope you found this video useful. Check the Microsoft site for more information or to learn about Microsoft sustainability efforts.